This is our newest episode of Ada Angels. I have a special guest with me today from um, the Harmony Project. Um, I'm starting to get a little bit interested in the project because I've been hearing like little things here and there from different friends. And I joined their um, Telegram group and they were like super cool and super nice. And so I just was intrigued and I wanna learn more about it. And so what better way than to ask questions to one of the leading community members and so uh, with that, can you introduce yourself? Hello, uh, my name is Matt. I go by Ogre Abroad in the, the chats uh, and Litecoin Yeti on Telegram I, or Twitter, I guess. Um, uh, but I've been with Harmony since I found them in March of 19. I'm sorry, March of 20, when we were migrating from the standard uh, network, because uh, Harmony started out with four shards and proof of work. And they then moved on and to an effective proof of stake algorithm. So right now it's proof of stake based kind of like ADA. Mm -hmm. um, but the the algorithm and the, the consensus model is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So with the consensus model, um, there's a band and currently that is 15% over and 15% below the median stake. So what is median stake? Mm -hmm. uh, there's currently 640 available validation seats. Each one is filled with a, a BLS key and validators can have more than one key as they grow. That's how they manage their effective bid. And the, the trick is to keep your effective bid within that band of 15% over and 15% below mm -hmm. the EMS or effective media stake. Okay. Okay. So, so what is it that um, like the Harmony Project like wishes to achieve in like in the world? You know, like what do they want to do? Well, if you go to the website, um, Harmony One, I'm sorry, Harmony Dot One, mm -hmm. uh, you'll see consensus for 10 billion people, which is more people than there exist on the planet. Mm -hmm. um, the intent is to spread for everyone. It, it's not supposed to be rich get richer or taking care of the small tech few. Uh, the goal is to eventually have everybody being a part of the community and to make it simple enough to where even the the most tech, we'll say tech non-savvy, no coiners mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> can go ahead and be involved and hopefully run their own validator someday. Um, I think that would be amazing if everybody's running their own validator. Okay, yeah, you were telling me um, earlier that that's what one of the goals is, is to make it, make the entry to the, to do this kind of thing, like really easy so that everyone can just run their own validator. So, um, so what, what, I guess what my, my disconnect is, is like, you know, what, so it's proof of stake kind of like ADA is, but then like, so there, you're talking about like usability and like users using the project, but like, what are we using it for? Well, I mean, the same thing we use any blockchain for. I mean, it's a way of transferring money mm -hmm. uh, without having the traditional financial structures in the way, slowing things down. Um, not to say that governments can't be involved. They're going to have to be involved. Governments aren't just going to get out of the way and go, okay, we don't care about money anymore. Right. But in reality, right now, the world is running on fiat currency. And if you look back in history, there isn't a single fiat currency that didn't go to zero. Mm -hmm. uh, once a nation or government currency gets decoupled uh, from gold or silver or some other stable commodity, mm -hmm. uh, eventually governments get greedy or they want to spend more than they're making in taxes and they just start making extra current or making extra money yeah. and that values the money and it, it becomes a vicious cycle. Um, mm -hmm. And I think we're seeing that now in the world, which is why the time is right for cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess to answer your question, um, of what we're using it for is, well, I think it's too early to say that, honestly. We're, I, I view us as being in like the late 80s, early 90s in comparison to the last tech revolution, mm -hmm. uh, that we're building out layer one. We're mm -hmm. still paving the roads and have no idea what's going to be driving on them. People think they know. People are going to say they know. But in reality, none of us know what's going to happen in five years or 10 years. Right. Uh, the reality is it could be used for everything. I mean, you could have an NFT that represents anything in your home over $500 and you use that for insurance. 
Uh, you can have smart contracts on chain so that when you buy something from um, Amazon.com or Alibaba, that you don't get charged until that item shows up at your doorstep mm-hmm. and you click received it. And that's when the money actually transfers. Mm-hmm. Um, the the DeFi, I'm sorry, the, the DeFi revolution is also quite huge mm-hmm. because right now there's people in third world countries that they don't have access to a bank. Mm-hmm. They don't even necessarily have access to get a government ID card, let alone if their village well just ran dry, they can't go get a loan to dig a new well and provide water to their community. Mm-hmm. So decentralized finance, which allows you to now turn this into a bank, mm-hmm. huge opportunity for a very large part of the population on this planet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that Harmony is doing it intelligently because they they recognize a lot of the opportunities, uh, cross-border finance, decentralized finance, NFTs, mm-hmm. and they're building towards all of those while bridging to everybody. Mm-hmm. So in reality, they're kind of staying neutral and allowing the future to happen while having that core team be extremely intelligent, um, very forward thinking, as well as very well pedigreed. Uh, I mean, we've got PhDs and, and whatnot on the core team, people who worked at Apple and Amazon and Google and all these other major tech companies have now mm-hmm. formed Harmony mm-hmm. and are developing the core technology that will help drive us to the future. Mm-hmm. Now, are you sure that you haven't like looked into Cardano? Because a lot of the things that you said are like core tenants of like Cardano as well. So like we're very much like jiving the same direction, you know? Um, <laughs> so You're not wrong at all. I love um, the Cardano community. I love the ethos uh, and what Cardano is trying to do. And I think to a degree, a lot of people in the space are, are looking at each other chain wise mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. or team wise okay well it's working over there we need to do that marketing wise right um so i think that as time goes on we're going to see a lot of that mirroring mm-hmm. um as well as i mean you're going to have a, a small amount of thought leaders and a lot of people that are going to go you know what that's right mm-hmm. that's what right looks like and we want to go down that road yeah um, no absolutely so think- like um so with that like you know i always say that like you know um competition amongst like peers is a good thing because it drives more innovation and you take what's good and you drop what's bad right so um so what do you think is like driving or what are the competitors with um harmony or do you guys do you guys feel that way do you have competitors I don't, I mean, it depends on who you talk to. Me personally, I don't like to think of them as competitors. Mm -hmm. I I very much like the word you just use and it's peers Mm -hmm. because in reality, five, 10 years from now, there's not going to be one chain left. Right. There's going to be half a dozen, maybe 20 chains that have survived and interconnected Mm -hmm. and possibly some of them will be niche. Like there might be one chain that just really draws in the gaming crowd. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the games end up getting developed there. Uh, and another chain may end up being the the DeFi chain. Mm-hmm. Um, but in reality, it all comes down to the communities. Mm-hmm. Because we, unless the, the chain itself is positioning the network to be a business-to-business network, mm-hmm. it all comes down to the community mm-hmm. and the beliefs of the community and where the community wants to go and what they're going to support. Because as time goes on, I mean, right now, our community, not at Harmony or Cardano, but in mm-hmm. general in the crypto community, to a lar- very large percent is traders and people that are only out to look yeah. there to make money and, and capitalize on the tech revolution. Mm-hmm. But as time goes on and we bring in more average people uh, that recognize that this is going to be the next computer or the next World Wide Web or yeah. the next internet, they're going to start coming on board and they're going to have more and more of an influence. Mm-hmm. So I think that will help drive it as well. Um, it's going to be Well, there's two things that really play into who will survive and who will not in my mind. Mm -hmm. One is the communities and that's going to be foremost um, Mm -hmm. as far as where that chain goes, especially as we migrate towards decentralized autonomous organizations. Mm -hmm. Um, And the other one is going to be the ability to spin up the tech and react quickly to an ever-changing landscape that is crypto. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, no, I do. I do like that. So, um, um, so, the other day when I was first talking to you, we were talking about like the staking and how the staking works. I do think that it is different from what I know from Cardano. So can you explain um, how your guys' um, uh, Harmony staking works? Okay, so with the staking, 
Um, I mean, it's EPOS, effective mm -hmm. proof of stake, mm -hmm. uh, which at its root is proof of stake. The effective part is the little bands, right? The 15% above and 15% below. Um, but what happens is somebody comes in and they want to make that 10 to 12% returns on their one. Mm -hmm. And so they delegate to validators. Mm -hmm. Now, currently, Harmony is somewhat gamified. There's a lot of different factors. Um, there's four different shards, as I mentioned. So mm -hmm. as a validator, you choose which shards you're going to validate on, where you have your BLS keys. Um, and with 640 seats, an even spread is 160 keys per shard. Mm -hmm. So you have to decide as a validator which keys it's going to be or which shards you're going to validate on, um, or you may spread across all of them, or you might have one that is, has more of your keys than others. Mm -hmm. And the, the delegators come in and they look at that. And as I said, a lot of them are traders. So they'll just come in and look and see who's got the highest effective return, mm -hmm. right? Because as you play the game as a validator, you're able to increase your return comparative to others or you have poor returns if you're not playing the game well. Okay. So that is one of the metrics that a lot of the community members uh, will use because they're they're here to make money. Mm -hmm. um, as time is going on and the community is growing, uh, I love it because we're seeing more and more people that are community minded. Mm -hmm. So where they won't so much look at that expected return, or maybe they just realize that the difference between a, a ten percent return and an eight percent return is very minimal mm -hmm. when you're when you're delegating with small amounts, unless you're delegating with millions of dollars, it's right. really not going to make that much of a difference. Right. Um, so what they'll do is they'll support validators that are contributing back to the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. uh, and in Harmony, I'm not sure how it is on Cardano, but on Harmony, you could delegate to a hundred different validators if you wanted to. Um, you could delegate a little bit to all of them mm -hmm. or you can delegate to five. It doesn't matter. That's up to you. That's mm -hmm. left in the, chain, in the hands of the delegator themselves. Mm -hmm. Delegation is really simple. I mean, you just go to the website, find the validator, click delegate, say how much, mm -hmm. sign the transaction, and poof, mm -hmm. you are now delegated. And at the beginning of the next epoch, you start earning. And every mm -hmm. two seconds, you earn. So, okay, so that so let's let's um, let's pause there for a second because I can ask you a question about like me personally, like staking, because I started that a couple of days ago, and I don't know what I'm looking at, <laughs> you know. So, um, okay, so but to answer your first question, how it's done on Cardano. Right now it's one wallet per delegation. So the Harmony wallet has like a one up on that because it's multi-delegation, one wallet, multi-delegation. So that's coming to Cardano. It just wasn't um, wasn't done in the beginning because they had other other things that they were working on that they wanted to do first. Um, so right yep. now when I'm, multi when I'm multiplying, when I'm delegating to multiple delegations um, to, um, different pools, I have to create separate wallets, um, which is just a little bit tedious, but not, not bad. It's just, you have to manage the different seed phrases. Um, I mean, to so a degree, think, it's not a bad thing. It's yeah. kind of the demand security. If you don't have a hardware wallet, one of yeah. the best ways to make sure you're not a target is to split your money up. That way, mm -hmm. if they gain just one wallet, yeah. they don't get your whole kit and caboodle. True. True. Yeah. So, um, so with hardware wallets with Harmony, like how does that work with multi-delegation? So you just back up the, you can just use your hardware, you can stake from your hardware wallet. Okay, so it's the same. So currently with Cardano, you can only stake to one wallet from your hardware wallet. So that makes multi-delegation a little bit more tricky, um, but it's coming, it's still coming, but um, it is said to come out sometime probably quarter two um, because it's been on the list. It's people really want it. I can, I can see the appeal of the, how easy it was for me to go through and choose five different people and just, you know, delegate quickly. Um, it does have a minimum of 1 million, 1 million, 1,001, um, 1,001. So I found that out the, uh, the hard way because I didn't read the fine print, but so I was like, okay, 1,000 for you, 1,000 for you, 1,000. And then I had like 600 left and it was like, you need a minimum of 1,000. I'm like, dang it. <laughs> you can't have 1000 you have to wait you know so anyway but yeah so there is a minimum with ada there's no minimum um so it's like you just need the 10 ada in your wallet to fund transactions or something like that but uh but, yeah there's no minimum. Security measures so people couldn't spam the network mm -hmm. uh, if there is no minimum then you have the potential that somebody can come along and essentially dos the network by spamming it with transactions of mm -hmm. 0.01 ADA and do a million of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and that can crash the network. 
That's um, true. Yeah. So that's that's why they planned it at a thousand. Um, mm -hmm. That was, of course, though, when it was sub penny and mm -hmm. needs to be addressed mm -hmm. because that, that's becoming a significant amount of money for a lot of people in the world. Yeah. So that's something else that we're going to be looking at here shortly is reducing that um, to a to a smaller number, but mm -hmm. for security purposes, they'll still keep a minimum there. Yeah. So for the staking, like what I'm looking at on my my dashboard um, is like it says it says on my thing like rewards earned and it still says zero right now. But then in the top, it says like plus three. So I don't know what those two numbers mean. Like what does so if you look at the lines for each validator mm -hmm. until you get to a whole number, it's not going to register. Got it. But your rewards okay. will add them all up. So if you have like 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4 mm -hmm. and 0.3. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that math, but probably about three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got it off a bunch of random numbers. Yeah, yeah. But that's probably going to be about three, one as your cumulative reward. And that's okay. what's shown at the top. Okay. Now, like I said, I only put in about like 500 US dollars. And so that's why, like, with the with the five, there's like 2,000, 2, 2,000, and then like one, 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 you know? So it's like, um, so there's not very much in there. I'm planning on growing it more, but just as like a test, I was like, okay, I'll just like spend $500 and see what happens, you know? And then I put it in there and split it amongst the five that you had recommended to me. And then I'm like, okay, now what does it look like? What does it mean? <laughs> so, um, so you're, um, Right. So your um, epoch cycles are much shorter than um, than uh, Cardano's. Cardano's is five days. So what what are your epoch cycles? Uh, one epoch is right now uh, eighteen point two hours, roughly, okay. uh, and it's based on that two second block time, which they're trying to get down to one second. Okay. Uh, how soon that's going to happen? Because I know they're also working on uh, redel. I'm sorry, not redelegation, but resharding is the next okay. major tech advance that they're going to be putting into place. Okay. So what is the benefit of changing that? Of changing what? The, um, like the epoch cycles, like making it more short. Well, the epoch cycle to a degree, it's a security thing. Um, I heard someone complaining about another chain at one point where they didn't like it because when they undelegate, it takes like two weeks and some are even as long as a month to get your money back. Mm -hmm. so that you can do something else with it if you want to change it to a different coin mm -hmm. or maybe put it to a different delegator. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in part, that freezing, if you would, is a security measure to stabilize the network. Okay. Because if there's some networks out there, you can unstake and it's immediately back in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Well, on massive bull runs or big spikes, that number one very quickly tanks the price and gets rid of all the gains gains that the, the chain has seen as well as destabilizes the network mm -hmm. because especially in an epos where it's voting based um if all of a sudden i go from a million one delegation down to 80 million one delegation mm -hmm. i might fall out of election mm -hmm. and if i'm not paying close enough attention then then that can be very detrimental to the chain mm -hmm. um so to a degree, it's a security measure as far as the, the length of the epoch. There is not a definitive, this is the best answer. This is what we should do. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the chains are just experimenting with different values and different lengths of time. Okay. Um, but ultimately, the, the chains don't run on time. They run on blocks and mm -hmm. block count. So if you have a, a much faster block time and finality mm -hmm. time, then you can reduce that epoch time. Okay. So do you guys have a, like a lock period in for when you unstake and get your, your uh, harmony back, your one? Yep. Mm -hmm. So if you want to, to say completely undelegate and redelegate to another node, mm -hmm. that is a, a one epoch hold in place okay. um, because all of those delegation transactions get processed at the end of the epoch during the election cycle. Mm -hmm. So if you undelegate now, your money is still on that validator earning until the end of the current epoch. Mm -hmm. It processes at the end that you undelegated. And then during that next epoch, you could redelegate to another validator if you want. And at the mm -hmm. end of that epoch, it will go into effect and you'll start earning one epoch later. So you lose one epoch mm -hmm. if you want to redelegate within the chain. Okay. If you want to undelegate completely, get your funds back so that they're yours and you can take them to exchange or whatever you want to do with them, mm -hmm. that is a seven epoch lock period where you don't earn, uh, which is roughly five to six days, depending upon when during the epoch you undelegate. Okay. 
Okay, so when you want to change validators, you do lose one epoch of rewards. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I'm just going to like side note this, like with, with Cardano, there is a three epoch uh, wait until you go active and start earning with your new uh, pool, but there's no break in rewards because you just keep getting rewards from your previous one until you're active and getting with the new one. So it's like, just like hopscotch. It's like, you just keep continuing with the rewards, but it's just which pool are you getting rewards from, you know? Um, right. But there's no break. So there's like, I, I like the little, the little differences I'm learning. <laughs> so, um, okay. So then was that, what else was I going to ask you about um, staking? You said something about elections. So how is your validator like elected? What does that mean? Okay. Oh, oh, excuse me. Sorry. So there are a total of 640 available seats. Mm -hmm. And each one of those is filled by a BLS validator. Mm -hmm. And what happens is a single validator can run multiple BLS keys. Okay. And the way they've discouraged um, the very large companies to just spin up a giant validator and ignore it mm -hmm. is that you have that band, which I mentioned earlier, where you have 15% above, 15% below. Mm -hmm. If you go above that band, it's a point of diminishing returns. Okay. So where if you have too much delegated to you and not enough keys, your effective return goes down because that return is split among all of that delegated one. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, good Lord. I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, and so the key there is to spin up keys as you grow to stay within that band. Um, and if you go too low and you have 640 other keys that have an effective bid that's higher than yours, then you don't get elected. You have to make sure you're one of the top 640. Um, and that will grow once they get resharding, that will grow to a thousand. It will be 250 public validators per shard. Okay. And so, as more shards, that's an additional 250 seats. Yeah. Okay, so you were telling me a little bit about like there's some gameplay involved. Like, is it possible to kind of like explain how these like pieces all move together? Um, is it because I know you told me you wanted to screen share before, but I don't know if you can just like say it or if you want to do a screen share. Well, all right, so that's not a short conversation. I don't know how long you want this video to be. It's fine, like however you want to explain it, but I think that it is a key component <laughs> to kind of like how it works and how how um how, how just how it works right like because i don't think that we have a lot of gameplay over on our side and so i am intrigued what does gameplay mean because um we are having issues with those big exchanges and those pools and so like um you guys are just you know um not attractive to them because of this this part so i want to know like what does that mean you know so okay so in order to get good returns you need to pay attention you need to play the game and it's kind of gamified and what that means is there's a few different factors um, one of which i already mentioned and that's the four different shards mm -hmm. so with 160 seats on each shard the overall rewards are divided evenly among those shards right so the rewards for each block are divided by four and if one shard only has 150 validators on it and the other shards are then overpopulated with more those other ones are going to get reduced rewards and the one with 150 validators is going to get more rewards because it's the same amount of rewards for each shard but mm -hmm. it's divided by fewer bls mm -hmm. so that's one way you can affect the outcome um another one is kind of your your group percentage um which on each shard you have your well you have your effective bid right which is your overall complete stake divided by how many keys you have and you want that to be within that 30% window, 15% above EMS and 15% below EMS. Mm -hmm. And if you have a higher amount of stake and the key so that you have a high bid, well, then you might be one of those keys on a shard that has a bunch of low bids. So you have a, a higher percentage or a higher group percentage, uh, which some refer to as stake weight. Um, so you'll get more of the rewards because mm -hmm. you've got, if there's a say a million total one delegated to that shard and you've got 500,000 of them, well, you're getting half the rewards. Mm -hmm. So that's another way you can affect it. A third way is if say a large validator or something goes down and a whole bunch of um, slots open up, 
you can expand your BLS, create more and get below that lower range, right? So just like on the top side, where if you get above that 15% over EMS, you don't earn any more, mm -hmm. no matter how many more bids you have or how many more delegations you have um, on the bottom side, it caps also and says, okay, well, below that 15%, everybody down here, you're still getting paid as though you were at that band limit. Mm -hmm. So it, you can throw out a bunch more BLS and get an increased return um, because let's say you have a lower bid, or I'm sorry, a lower band of like 4.2 million and you spin up a bunch of keys so that your bid is 3 million per key. Well, now you're earning 1.2 million more on each key than you're actually half. Mm -hmm. So you're getting a whole lot more rewards. Um, and that's actually kind of a problem. And we're working to fix that mm -hmm. because that encourages large validators to spin up a bunch of extra keys to suck up those rewards and get the higher uh, estimated, or sorry, expected return. Mm -hmm. And it makes it harder for young new validators to, to join into the consensus. Okay. So like, I hear a lot about the, the keys. So the keys are important to to do the the bids and things like that so how do you get the keys like that's part of like spinning up the validator node like how like how do you create more keys all right so the way the validator works the validator is essentially on chain mm -hmm. right it, like your address where you hold your your tokens or mm -hmm. coins uh you create the validator it's created on chain and then you modify it by adding and reducing bls to it or delegating more or less to it mm -hmm. that's another way you can effectively change your bid is by pulling some of your um, self stake off mm -hmm. or adding more to it. Um, but those keys are, are run by nodes, right? So to support that validator that's on chain, which is essentially just kind of like a monitor in a way to group how you're performing, mm -hmm. you spin up a node, like a virtual server mm -hmm. and put the binary and all the code on there. Mm -hmm. And then as it gets blocks, you sign those blocks and you push them off to the leader node and then that leader node sends them to the beacon chain uh, as it would in pretty much any sharded environment. Mm -hmm. um, so the keys are actually what do the signing. Mm -hmm. So I might have like, a, I've got eight nodes on four shards, right? A main and a backup for each of them. Mm -hmm. And the main and the backup both have the same keys on them, uh, which on other chains you can't do because then that would cause double signing. But on Harmony, it just throws out the second one it gets. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool that way. You can have an active, active environment to make sure you're always up and always signing. Um, but those keys, every block that comes in, let's say I have 10 keys running on shard zero, every key signs that block and pushes it forward. Okay. So that's how kind of the keys come into play. The keys are the actual validators. They're what's doing the validation of the blocks and pushing okay. it forward. Yeah, it's kind of what I was like connecting, like it's important to have the keys. And so like, um, so do you have to, this is kind of a weird, weird way to say it. When, when we make new nodes, we have to like to make deposits and each node is a new deposit of ADA, right? How do you, how do you get more keys? And like, why would you not get as many keys as possible? Like what is, what is controlling that, you know? Your maximum delegation, right? Okay. So if I have a hundred million delegation, and I spin up 10 keys. Mm -hmm. Now each key has an effective bid of 10 million. Okay. And if that gets too high, then that's the point of reduced returns. And if it gets too low, I fall out of election. Okay. 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 Yeah. So it is the, the those little parts are different from, from our Cardano world. So this is very interesting. Um, okay. And that's why I say peers instead of competitors. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, because it, to a degree, this is all one giant experiment both mm -hmm. on the technological side as well as the social side. Um, some of these things will prove to be life-changing and will carry forward. And this tech idea might be fantastic and be in place for the next 20 years as mm -hmm. the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. Some of them are going to die off in two years and realize that something else is better. Yeah, or mergers, you know, partnerships or mergers together. So um, Once upon a time, proof of work was amazing and it was awesome and it was mm -hmm going to take us to the future. Mm -hmm. And now it's slowly dying off because mm -hmm. it's proved to be very inefficient for the environment mm -hmm. um, and allows for centralization in locations where electricity is free or very mm -hmm. inexpensive. Well, so it's just like the, the evolution of anything, right? Like everything is 
is the big thing until something comes along and improves it and is more efficient or effective or like whatever. It's not to say that the old way was bad. This new way is just improved, you know? Um, and so the, the same thing is what I'm trying to explain to my friends or family who are kind of like against, how do you say, like, you know, hot topic, like vaccines or like masks, or like whatever. And the, there's just like, over the past couple of, of years, there's just been like, this study says this, and this study says this, but this newer study says this, which one are you going to believe? It's like, well, you're going to believe the more newer one, <laughs> because the more new one has more information that debunks the old one. Okay. So, or it improves on the old one. So old information, new information, you know, so it's like, <laughs> um, so, so um, yeah. So I have too many things going on, man. Like I got the kids, I got the school, I got the note, I'm learning about this and I have all the things, you know? Um, yeah, so that's, that's why like I haven't, like I told you, like I haven't had a lot of time to do my own research but I love learning from other people. Um, so what have we not covered with like Harmony? What else do we need to know? We need to talk to these new people, my friends who don't know anything about it but we have to talk to them like they know nothing and they're like children. <laughs> right, so some highlights for harmony two second okay. finality which means okay. after two seconds the block is finalized irreversible good to go okay um we've got four shards so it's fully sharded already smart contracting is all in place um we've got smart contracts for hrc 20 and hrc 721 um four or five dexes now and growing we've got a bunch of different wallets you can use mm -hmm. mobile Chrome extension as well as desktop options. Mm -hmm. um, and there's more than one for any of them. Mm -hmm. uh, we're fully EVM compatible. So the Ethereum, um, anything on Ethereum mm -hmm. can move over to Harmony across the bridge that we've built. Because, mm -hmm. um, and I say we, I, I take ownership, but I'm part of the community. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, yeah, there's a bridge to Ethereum. There's a bridge in progress that's being tested in its final stages to Polkadot. Mm -hmm. They're also building a bridge to BSC, mm -hmm. as well as um, a way to wrap Bitcoin and pull it directly from the Bitcoin chain over onto Harmony. Okay. So they're doing a lot there. Um, the wallets are huge, the DeFi is huge, and now we're starting to see games pop up. Okay. Um, and they're focusing on DeFi, I'm sorry, not DeFi, but NFTs. Uh, there's a marketplace that's just about done to where it'll be like open sea style uh, I'm hopefully with slightly tighter permissions because I don't like the fact that an open sea if I want to say sell a game nft I have to give open sea permissions to my entire wallet for yeah. every token it sounds game. scary <laughs> yeah yeah so um, uh, but yeah they're doing that uh, they're working hard to attract the artists and the nft creators mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of really good things going on and decentralized governance is starting to kick off. It's going to start in a scaled out fashion. Uh, they're not going from zero to hero on DeFi because in my mind, that's bad. It just mm -hmm. breaks it. That's how you get forks and disagreements and bad juju. Mm -hmm. So they're starting out with just the validators and we're doing decentralized governance on future changes to the network itself. Mm -hmm. And then to kind of kickstart community, um, governance they're just conceding a few small DAOs um to where there will be a little bit of funds and then a small group of people that kind of manage it and grow that community and then the successful DAOs I'm sure will take on more responsibility and have mm -hmm. more funding um and it'll, the, the team is kind of controlling that to a degree and not letting it get out of control to where it just completely fragments and splinters the community so I really like that Okay, so that's cool because you guys already have like a little bit of your feet in the DeFi world where like Cardano is almost there. Like we're going to get there in quarter two with the last phase of the Gogan rollout. Um, but uh, but they're ready. They have all of the stuff ready for like we, what you were describing with the bridge. Like they're totally ready just to like port people over, right? Um, they're just making, they're just testing it and getting the shit kicked out of it right now. Um, so <laughs> um, that's a bad thing, you know? The, the turtle did win the race sometimes. Yeah. So <laughs> and I say that a, not as um, an interesting thing positive. with these. Um, I'm sorry, what? Well, I was going to say another positive for Harmony is that mm -hmm. it's a very young chain. Mm -hmm. um, it was conceived in 2018. They first rolled out mainnet in 2019. Mm -hmm. 2020 upgraded it to effective proof of stake. So mm -hmm. the 
pool of developers they have is very talented and mm -hmm. working very, very hard mm -hmm. pushing this stuff forward. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I wanted to ask also, like, what other type of like um, relationships or like um, project deals are you guys working on, like in parallel as you guys are like developing forward on what you guys want to do with your um, like interoperability with other other chains? All sorts of them. Um, we actually have a guy who is doing a lot of biz dev and looking to attract a lot of the people from Ethereum um, mm -hmm. because as I'm sure know the ethereum network is somewhat broken now don't yeah. get me wrong I love yeah. ethereum um <laughs> I, I view it as kind of the linux of the future mm. and it will eventually be the the core network that everything else bridges to and goes across mm -hmm. <clears throat> but they decentralized from the beginning and while that is their superpower it's also their weakness mm -hmm. because it takes much harder or much longer to get everyone to agree on a solution and turn in any given direction mm -hmm. um, that also ensures that the tech that finally ends up in place is the best tech mm -hmm. because you've got the whole world looking at it and analyzing it and going yeah you know what that didn't work so well over here they tested it they tried it and they kind of failed mm -hmm. so let's not do that here mm -hmm. uh, so i mean you look at the the benefit of being a centralized organization you can run more quickly you can implement changes more quickly develop and go off in a certain direction but the problem is without enough oversight, enough people looking at it, you might be going in the wrong direction. Sure. Um, yeah. So that's so. where like the kind of the <clears throat> community governance is important, but it's also like you should know what you're voting for, you know, so Very good true. leadership is important. So, um, but yeah, like I, I totally, totally get that. So, um, but yeah, I'm trying to think I had another question because you said something earlier and I can't remember what it is now. <laughs> So, about food. So, <laughs> so like, mm, it'll come to me but what's your favorite um thing that harmony is doing with DeFi on on harmony honestly you trade which is one that is really not getting a whole lot of love mm -hmm. um it's sesame seed is the the core project mm -hmm. um that helped spawn it and there are validators that are on several different chains and they have a really cool project where that you don't get like if they were validating on ADA, you wouldn't get ADA back from them as you would with most validators. You'd get their token, which is seed. Mm -hmm. And one seed equals one seed across all chains. They've kind mm -hmm. of created a seed bridge. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they take all of the rewards on all the different proof of stake chains they're on mm -hmm. and they redelegate them to the, themselves mm -hmm. to keep growing. And then they issue out their seed and the seed represents your portion of their earnings. Um, but it's not just on your chain. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of it. It's kind of like a, a neat little retirement fund, if you would. Yeah. Um, because right now I wanna say they're validating on Harmony, Tron, Ontology, Icon, and somewhere else. They spun up another one, um, brain farting. Um, that's kind of just my like set it and forget it mm -hmm. project. Mm -hmm. I don't really, I have, I, I haven't been paying enough attention to them lately, admittedly, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Um, but they've also created a really cool DEX system, um, which exists on each of the chains. And they've got overall ecosystem governance, which is set up on Ethereum. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's just, it's really neat what they're doing, I think. Although Harmony is one of the least utilized chains with the U-Trade mm -hmm. um, system, just because it's still so young. There aren't a, lo a lot of different tokens there mm -hmm. to put on to the exchange. Mm -hmm. So waiting a little bit longer till Harmony grows and has more project-based tokens that they can yeah. put on there. So like I've just started learning <clears throat> about like DeFi and liquidity pools and like that kind of stuff because I want to know what it looks like and what to expect it to look like when it comes to Cardano. So so Harmony has that already, like the, the DEXs and DAO and liquidity pools. And so how would you direct people to go and, and play with that? Because um, I know people that I, I talk to that don't want to play with it on Ethereum because they don't want to pay the, the gas fees and stuff. It's too much to even get into looking at it. And plus, it's like all gobbledygook when you're looking at all of it. It's like, what the hell is all of this? You know, um, I had to kind of understand what the purpose of like ERC 20 token converter even means. And like, so when I'm explaining it to my friends, like, it means that it can't it can't play with Ethereum token. It has to play with 
W Ethereum token because it wants to play with its own kind, you know? So it's like, right. um, like you on this playground, you can't play, but you can put on this vest and now you can be on our team, you know? So it's like <laughs> um, pretty much how I explain it to people, right? But like, yeah. they, cause they told me like, well, I have these tokens. Why can't I just put this token into that pool? Why does it not have an option? It's like, well, because they want to play with their own kind, pretty much, you know. Um, but then to do any sort of transaction costs 50 bucks at least, you know. So it's like, and you have to do that like three times because you have to validate token number one and token number two and then deposit it. And then, oh my gosh, it's a, it's so, it's, it's a mess. Um, but I understand what happened. I understand that the DeFi um, on Ethereum really exploded like in the fall winter of last year, which caused price of Ethereum to rise, which caused gas fees to rise. So understand what happened. It's just unusable for people like me who want to just do small transactions and it costs more than what I'm doing, you know, so. And their current system on Ethereum allows you to jump to the front of the line if you want yes, to pay, you pay more. more you, can just, you can just go to the front of the line. So if, even if I pay like the average, it still takes forever because there's other people who overpay because they want to, to get there faster they want to outbid you or like whatever and so yeah <laughs> i can see why people don't want to play with it so i'm looking at other ones and so i've been kind of looking at the finance smart chain um interested in looking at what harmony has for for theirs um and uh really looking at what cardano is going to do because i want to i want to play <laughs> play more it seems like it's going to be fun it seems like it's going to be um, a, a good easy way to do these decentralized finance things and not have to you know um like you say grow and help support people who don't have financial systems like this is going to be like really good um so i wanted to so i got into a little bit on the ethereum uh dexes and because i want to know what it looks like so that i can help people when it comes over to our side right because if i have no idea what it looks like then i can't help you um but yeah so so okay so tell me about the the harmony side and like what where do i go to look for these uh the dexes and the different exchanges um well that's something we're working on is a centralized page that you can go to it's funny i had a a very long conference call earlier today with some of the other active community members and kind of identifying how we need to polish harmony what little things we need to do to make it easier for new people like yourself to come on board and find out all the, about all the awesomeness without having mm -hmm. to sit in telegram and listen for hours on hours mm -hmm. um so that isn't perfect they have a, a page on the harmony dot one no docs dot harmony dot one mm -hmm. uh which talks about the different walls and the different DeFi exchanges uh, there's also kind of a a page that a dev made but hasn't really maintain, maintained, right. uh, which is harmonyvalidators.com, which also gives a few wallets and a few of the DEXs. Mm -hmm. uh, but the best way to do it is just come in and say hi and talk to us. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll happily share from the Telegram group or even in Reddit mm -hmm. uh, and just let everybody know where to go. And we're all about educating. I, in my mind, that is the best defense that people have because yeah. realistically, we're about our money and people don't want to lose their money they want to make more money that's well that's not why everybody's here i mean some mm -hmm. of us truly are here for the tech mm -hmm. we also still make money <laughs> yes. i mean like so, so incentives are is where it's at right you have good incentives you draw in more people but people are yeah. always going to be apprehensive and want to keep their money close they want to know that there's no risk and so the more we share the more we educate the more they're secure in their decisions so um if you want great reward you must take great risk uh, just make sure you're educated on that risk and you understand it. And that's the key. Yeah. Um, so it's a calculated risk. Um, and so with DeFi, just to kind of sum it up and how it works, you have an exchange, right? And in order to make a trade, you have to, the, the exchange has to have both sides of that pair, coins on both sides. So it mm -hmm. can say, okay, well, you can sell this coin and buy this coin. In a decentralized exchange, there's several different ways to do it. And I don't want to go too deep down that rabbit hole, but you essentially need to create that liquidity. Right. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you'll go in and you'll deposit your tokens into a farm or something, mm -hmm. and then you'll get a liquidity pool back or a liquidity token back and you'll deposit that into the liquidity um, pool. And from there that grows and the, the bigger the liquidity pool is, the better rates people will get when they make exchanges. And if you have a really low liquidity pool, it's going to be mm -hmm. bad rates because, I mean, just the way they're designed. Yeah. Um, so the key is you want to look for decentralized exchanges that have good liquidity pools or pairs that have good liquidity pools. Mm -hmm. uh, something else that people need to research is, um, oh, good Lord, brain farting. 
blah, IL, impermanent loss. Oh All my right, gosh. So okay. So if you have a great explanation for impermanent loss, I hope it's better than mine. So like, I want to hear yours. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> um, I'm not going to call it a great one. Mm. Um, but in essence, you put your funds on both sides to fund mm -hmm. that liquidity pool. Mm -hmm. Anytime there's a trade, mm -hmm. the exchange is going to take a small fee, mm -hmm. right? So that is going to be part of your um, impermanent loss. Another mm -hmm. part is if say one of the sides because neither one of them are stable mm -hmm. right unless you're doing stable coins only right prices rise and, and shrink on both mm -hmm. sides of the pool mm -hmm. and you have what's called arbitrage where people might go to some major exchange and buy up a token and run up the price but on that decentralized exchange that price hasn't caught up mm -hmm. so now they're going to go buy that token on the cheap mm -hmm. and then they can turn around take it to a central exchange centralized exchange and sell it off that can also cause a permanent loss. Mm -hmm. So in reality, if you're going to join a liquidity pool, it shouldn't be a short-term thing. You're mm -hmm. looking at a long-term investment there and hoping that both sides go up over time. Mm -hmm. And in the process, people are trading back and forth and they're gaining a little bit and you have a little bit of impermanent loss, but that's where the governance tokens come in, right? Mm -hmm. the governance tokens are issued out to cover your impermanent loss right. and hopefully they go up in value if that DEX is successful. Mm -hmm. If that DEX not successful they don't go up and they don't cover your impermanent loss right so that's what so then the how do you how do you find the ones and does harmony have these where you stake those uh, pool tokens so you can also stake the tokens right mm -hmm. so um not not all pools offer that offer staking though but it's like how do you find the ones that do eh, by researching okay <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, the pool that doesn't have it today recognizes that that's part of the future. So they're starting to create those. Yeah. There's also layer two projects that are sitting on top of all the DEXs and aggregated and will take care of some of that. They'll cover that impermanent loss. I can't explain exactly how, because I need mm -hmm. to do some more research on that. Mm -hmm. But I know that's the thing that the next level of technology they're they're somehow washing that away. Okay. Um, I don't know how it works. I, it's I okay. Really yeah, no, work. it's the, the, the world is like just changing so quickly and we have to like keep up with it. Right. And so right. the, the thing that's amazing to me is some people, they put so much money into these liquidity pools and then they take it out and they put it into another one and somehow they've gained like monies. And I'm like, I don't know how that works. I'm too scared to play with it right now. I'm just trying to like learn one, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, do you know like how that works? Like how it goes from one to the other and how you have such a large gain? I mean, it, no, okay. if that's gonna happen, then they're probably doing like a stable coin on one side and mm -hmm. a, a coin that's not stable on the other mm -hmm. and waited for it to go up in value, then pulled it out and then redeposited it somewhere else where it's lower. It's kind of like, you could do that. It's kind of like a new form of arbitraging, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have one pool where it's, you've got a, a pool that it's like the Cardano against the US dollar, uh, USDC, right? Mm -hmm. And on that pool, um, Cardano has risen, actually it would go down in value um, to where you can pull it out and then take it over to another pool where it's higher and you have to put in fewer, I'm sorry, Stop, rewind and reverse that. Mm -hmm. Cardano went up in value mm -hmm. um, versus the US dollar. So they pulled it out and then moved it over to another exchange where mm -hmm. Cardano hasn't gone up yet. Mm -hmm. It's still at a lower depreciated price. Mm -hmm. And you could put the same amount of Cardano in um, against the US, or I'm sorry, a lower amount of Cardano yeah. in against. No, I got that. Yeah. So it just seems like to me, it seems more work to me right now because like I can't monitor like all these DEXs and all their pools to see if this one's not caught up to this one and do that quick thing, especially on Ethereum where it's not quick unless you pay that extra on top to pay that higher gas fee. And then does that all come out to be profit for you after it's all said and done? Is like all, all the questions, you know? So it's like- right. um, And so that we're not knocking our Ethereum too much. EIP mm -hmm. 1559 is coming out, mm -hmm. which will stabilize your fees in theory. That's good. Um, which yeah. will get rid of a lot of that mm -hmm. problem uh, yeah. and will make it so that the rich don't get richer. It'll be a stable mm -hmm. fee regardless of the transaction. Mm -hmm. And that opens up a lot of doors for Ethereum mm -hmm. um, as well as puts a hurting on the chains that have not managed to connect to Ethereum and really get that ecosystem, that cross-chain ecosystem going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, I didn't mean I didn't mean to like talk talk too much bad about Ethereum. Like they are. No, they you're are, not. <laughs> so. we're, we're talking about two different chains here, right? I mean, yeah. Cardano and Harmony. And yeah. in my mind, we need to keep that relationship. That I don't know which one's going to win. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one. The dot com boom of the late two thousands, mm -hmm. kind of similar to that in some ways, where there's multitude thousands of different chains out there, mm -hmm. and the ones that win might be ones we haven't even heard of yet. Sure. So I just, I like, as you said earlier, to, to go back to the beginning and looking at them all at peers. So I just mm -hmm. try to make sure that even though we might be comparing weaknesses and strengths as mm -hmm. we view them mm -hmm. of different chains, that we're not bashing chains. Mm -hmm. um, and we're talking, yeah. we're also talking about the positive as well as the negative. Yep. No, exactly. No, I like it. So cool. Okay. Um, I think we covered a lot of information. I think we, we um, answered a lot of questions. Is, do you think we covered everything or is there something <laughs> it's like there's not everything it's not possible so not um <laughs> okay but i think we covered most of the the big points um so that we can i can share this with my with my friends and they can see kind of how harmony is and um they can get a good idea about you know the good things that they're bringing to the table and start looking into it more because I do think it is another um, another thing that I want to want to get into and, and invest into because it's like <laughs> I was explaining it to my my pool group a little bit earlier. I was like, I look at this like a little a, ba a baby Ada, you know, it's just like <clears throat> like Ada a couple of years ago where it's like if you bought in now, like look at its growth over the last couple of years, right? And it's like people are like, man, I wish I knew about it then. It's like, well, I'm telling you now. And you're telling them now, like, it's going to grow. It has the potential. It has the team. It has the vision, like, you know, get into it now and watch it grow, right? It's not going to be for yep. day traders. It's not going to be for those, like, people who want to, like, trade. But it is, like, a long hold. So um, <laughs> I do, do want to. So. I mean, it back, referring back again to the, the 90s and the 80s, mm -hmm. um, as time went on, you saw a lot of merging going on. Mm -hmm. And I think that Ada and Harmony, our communities are very, very similar. The tech mm -hmm. that they're pursuing is very, very similar. Mm -hmm. And I would love to see collaboration um, mm -hmm. between the core team from Cardano as well as Harmony. I think that would benefit both teams. Yeah, I can um, see it happening because the, the leadership in Cardano really does like teamwork, you know, and they've made lots of deals with other chains and I can see it like um, them working together. So they're definitely not like closed minded and they like getting input from outside and making, making everybody better, like win-win, like sharing with others. And so, um, because oh, yeah, like I was telling you earlier, like there's not going to be a one to rule them all. Like we need to work together. We're working to make the world a better place so that we can, yep. you know, they say all the time, bank the unbanked, help make the world a better place, make every, every person, um, have their have their what do you call their voice heard right like everybody is equal just how does charles say it like the geographic lottery was not kind to that person so they just ended up in the wrong place you know um <laughs> but not by their own fault but they deserve they deserve these opportunities right just like so it just we happen to be born over here and they happen to be born over there they deserve the same opportunities right so but this technology is not not hard and not expensive and we can deploy this and help everybody you know so um yeah yeah so we that is the goal people. that is the goal and so they can call us like you know philosophers or idealists or whatever i don't care i'm working for this goal <laughs> so um i'd say thank you when they do mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <coughs> so. no no great ideas or change came from sitting on your butt and doing the same thing a day in and day out mm -hmm. yeah so I know that I get kind of teased by my husband every once in a while, like you are just talking to all these people who do not really like care about anything. Like, why are you, why do you spend so much time talking to them? And I'm like, because like, if I don't talk to them, who's going to talk to them? You know, like, you know, so I don't know. So somebody else probably will, but I mean, I'm here and I answer your questions on Facebook, on Telegram and like, whatever you need, I try to help. That's just my, that's my ethos, my goal. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. educator at the core i love it mm -hmm. so but yeah it was great talking to you i really appreciate your time i will probably be hitting up you again to answer more questions as i have more questions um and like you say like probably spinning up a validator node in the future like when i have some time 
um, like right now, things are just developing rapidly for both of us, like on both sides. And so like, I have to, we have to keep up with our own, our own stuff. And then um, my class takes up a lot of my time. So if I'm reading, I should be reading my class. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> right. um, and not falling asleep. Sleep is, sleep is necessary, but I can't get enough sleep. So, but yes, I really appreciate you coming on and talking to me and explaining everything. Um, and I hope everybody found value in this and we'll go and research more about um, Harmony One and join their Telegram group to uh, be introduced to their community and to learn more too. So with that, I will say goodbye and I'll see you guys next time.